Do you like creating some flames that go on a spiral or any kind of shape? That's what we're going to do today. We are going to create shapes, then we create UVs for them and map our textures using attributes. Yes, we are going to talk about attributes a lot in this video. Since we got a lot to cover without any further introductions, let's create our flames. Create a plane and call it Spiral Flames. Add a geonode and name it. To create our spiral, we can simply use Curve Spiral. Since we want our effect to be on ground, set the height to zero. Here in the spiral node, we can change our rotation, start and end radius, like that. Just like our previous videos, we need a trim curve node. Now we need to turn this to a mesh, so that we can create our flames. For that, add a curve to mesh node and this time, instead of curve circle, we use curve line for profile curve circle. Here I change it to direction and set the Z direction to 0 and change Y to get our shape. Here when I enable the face orientation option in overlays, you can see the red in the outside faces, which means we need to flip our normals. So I change it to minus 1 and now it's facing the right direction. Actually in this case, it is not that necessary to, to do this, but you might end up in that kind of situation if you ever try to use this kind of a method to create something. You can give some x value and change the length. Here in this setup, this length will work as our master radius that we talked about in the last videos. So that means we can change the length or vary it using a set curve radius node. I use the factor of the spline parameter node for our radius. Now, just like we expected, you can see in the beginning of the curve, the length is 0 and then it ends with a length of 1, which means 1 multiplied by our length. I'm not going to change anything else about the radius. I think we got everything we need. This is the basic shape. To make our flames, we need to create a material first. To add a material for a geometry we create inside geonodes, we can use a set material node. Then I create a new material and select it from geonodes. This way we can assign a material to our spiral. Before I move to shader editor, let's extract some values. Here I extract start, end, resolution, start and end radius, and length, and also material. Now let's make our shader. I create a new editor window from site and change it to shader editor. Now go to render mode, change to EV and make our background darker. Set the em emission color to white, just for now, and base color to black. To create our flames, I use a noise texture node. Straight away you can see we kinda having a mapping problem of our texture. Actually right now it kinda looks okay but trust me, most of the time it won't. In default, it uses generated coordinates for the geometry but as you realize, we need a better solution. Right now in Geonauts, mapping textures or working with UVs is not the easiest thing. We need to find a way to create our own UVs. So I will use this technique I learned from Bradley Animation Channel. If you are really into Geonauts, definitely check that out. Now just take a look at this. We usually use a curve primitive and then use another curve object to make it a mesh. In this example, I turn this curve line to a cube using a curve circle. So if I can find a way to say this curve starts with value of 0, ends with a 1, that means we can map this in one direction. But we need two directions for UVs, X and Y. What if we do the same for a curve circle? Find its start point and say it is 0 and end point is 1, we can map that shape too, right? If we can do that, we can actually map our tube to a UV space. But how are we going to find a 0 to 1 range? After will give us a 0 to 1 range value. It gives us a value between 0 to Curve 1 data like spline parameter. Okay, so we can use the spline parameter. See, creating UVs isn't that hard after all. So, to transfer any kind of a geo node value, the shader editor, we have to use attributes. We can't just drag the spline parameter factor to the group output and say, that's it. Because the spline parameter is not just for one curve, it's for every curve in the node setup. Even if you have dozens of curves in your setup, you need only one spline parameter node to access each and every one's unique data. So we need to say we need this data from this curve at this moment in time. In other words, we need to capture the data or our attribute 
at the right place for that we can use attribute capture attribute node and i place it before the curve to mesh node in our spiral curve site because I need to capture its factor before it turns into a mesh. Since we put it at the right place, now we need to tell it which value it needs to capture. So I drag our factor. In this exact same way, I'll also capture our curve lines factor. If you have trouble understanding how this data for two curves came from the same socket, just try thinking it backwards. So we extracted our attributes. Now we need to map it to X and Y and ship it to shader editor as our UV map. For that, use combine XYZ node and drag these to X and Y sockets and plug the vector output to group output. I name the output to UV and name the attribute to UV. You can call it anything, it doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is when you add an attribute node in the shader editor, whatever the name you gave earlier needs to match. We transferred our UVs, let's use it for noise texture. We made it even worse. Don't panic, that's happening because compared to the length of our profile curve, our spiral is way longer. What we did wrong in the mapping was we squashed a rectangle to a square. Just for now, I use a mapping node and scale up the X value, just eyeball it. Actually, still there's a problem, but I will talk about it later. To create the flames look, I use this noise and mix it with our vector. Then use a color ramp to increase the contrast. I use linear light blend mode here. Now just tweak, tweak until you satisfy. To get rid of black parts, plug this to alpha and change the material settings to alpha blend. You can use alpha clip too. It usually gives good result when creating stylized stuff. Here I used alpha blend, but I might change my mind to alpha clip later. Let's see. Now I need to make this visible seam go away. For that, I separated my X value from the UV vectors, smooth its ends using a color ramp node and multiply it with our flames set up after that. You can color the flames using a mix RGB node and uh, also increase the emission. Now, just like we offset our sine wave and spiral in the previous videos, here I used a map node to offset our flame. This time I want them to go up to give that burning flames look. Since we are dealing with vectors here, I used a vector map node and set the map type to subtract. Here, instead of typing a value or animating it later, I typed something else. I typed hash frame. What this does is it changes the value of this according to which frame we are currently in. But right now, when we play it, the effect is too much and we can't really see what is happening. So let's reduce the effect by multiplying it with a lower value. Now look at that. Remember a little while ago I talked about a problem in our mapping? Now let's see what it is. Although we are good right now with our mapping, when we change our radius and rotation, this starts to stretch again. That is because our scale value is no longer updating. We need it to update with our spiral length. So I'm going to do the same thing with the attributes. But this time, instead of factor, I'm going to capture the length of our spiral. Duplicate capture attribute node and plug the spline parameter length. Take that attribute to group output, name it length, and also give a name for our attribute and bring it over to the shader editor. Then plug it to our scale using a combined XYZ node. If you're still having mapping issues, use a multiply node before combine XYZ to get your desired look. And just like that, we have ourselves a spiral flames effect. You can make it any shape, circle, line. In this example, I draw the shape. It's very simple. I started with a curve instead of a, instead of a mesh plane. Use the original geometry for our flames line instead of curve spiral. Then in the edit mode, I have this option to draw the curve. 
and if you don't like going back and forth to shader editor whenever you want to make a change to color or strength you can create new inputs in the geo group input node and directly plug them to output in that way you can use them as attributes in the shader editor now you can change those settings from the modifiers tab i actually found an issue in that process sometimes it simply didn't work not sure exactly why but it happened once with one of my projects and also whenever you change the color keep an eye on your value it has a habit of suddenly jumping to 40 and also if you don't like the shadows disable them from the material setting so that's it that's it for this part you can download all the project files from the link below if you're following along with me in this series i guess now you can create materials for our beam and spiral we created earlier next part we will do something else so if you learn anything that's great i mean that's what we like to do we not only create stuff we let you create with us hit that like button comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to help learn so you won't miss out when the next part drops so until next time 